Okay, so we're gonna start off by sanding the bottom of the sh top shell, which is where Lil's name is gonna shine through. This is a very easy procedure. Um, we're basically using different um, grips. We're gonna start out with 320 grit sandpaper to loosen up a little bit of that haste that Racer puts on the mouse. Um, once it's clear, as you're beginning to see here, it's when the light could shine through. We're later going to apply a stencil on top of this, which is going to allow us to have his logo shine through. Then we're going to paint around the stencil. So here I'm going to make the stencils for Kilua, which I have already edited on the software, on the Cricut software, and we're just going to choose the photos and have the machine cut them. We're gonna make sure that it's the right size, accurate to what he wants. And then same thing with the shine through logo. On these racer mice, the shine through logo has to be the exact same size as that white circle that you see there on that shell. If it's any bigger than that, the light won't shine outside of those circles. Now we're just lightly sanding these edges here, which are actually visible from the top just so we can make sure that, you know, all the paint sticks to the surface. And I needed to get some tape. I'm gonna mask off a little bit of the area that I don't want paint to get on, since we're only painting that small piece in the middle, which is gonna be visible after we put a click spec on. I just wanna mask it off to make sure that no paint gets on any other area where I don't want it to. Another thing to note is that on the Viper Ultimate, the side grips are actually rubber. Um, I don't recommend painting those as it just will come right off with time. Um, I've tried many ways of painting it and it doesn't really stick. So just to save you guys some problems. So here we're just sanding the buttons to give the paint something to adhere to. I'm using a very light 600 grit to make sure I don't leave any big scratches on the actual mouse. Remember guys, the paint doesn't actually do magic. So if you guys um, are sanding this down too roughly, um, all those scratches will actually show later on if you don't do it with a fine grit paper. So here I'm just masking off the edges, which I don't want paint to get on. And the machine is done cutting out the stencil for me. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. This paper that I'm getting here is called the transfer paper. It's practically just tape, um, but it's transparent. So it lets you grab a hold of the stencil and then place it accurately on top of whatever else you need to place it on. So I'm just gonna open the photo again so I can get a reference to make sure I'm putting it in the right place. And once I know where it goes, I just apply some pressure so that it sticks evenly. I'm gonna put my phone as a light source under the mouse so that I know where I have to put Lowe's name to make sure that it shines through. Like I said earlier, if you actually put the stencil anywhere outside of that light area, it will actually not shine once you paint around it. So I'm gonna get it right in the middle and then I'm gonna apply some pressure to make sure the stencil sticks to the surface. Okay, so after we've masked off the entire mouse, now it's time for some clear coat. I used 
uh, Montana's line of plastic primer. So here I'm giving it the very first light coat. And I also put a piece of tape on the back where Logo's name shines through, just to make sure that no paint gets on there and it stops it from actually shining again. So I actually do three coats of clear, uh, all within 10 minutes apart. So you do the first coat on all the pieces, you wait 10 minutes, and you go ahead and hit it with the second coat and so forth until you have three. actually hit the base with one to two coats of black that's just gonna stop since I'm actually painting it with a very light color um, the light will probably still bleed through so if I were to just paint it white and not give it a black base first uh, logo Lowe's logo will actually shine through and they'll have some light in the background as well which I don't want that I just want his name to light up so now we're actually applying uh, the pink paint that's also 10 minutes apart per coat. So we hit it with one coat, wait 10 minutes and do it again. Uh, about three coats of paint. And then here we're painting the clicks white because we're gonna have a, a little bit of paint to fade into. This is actually my second coat of black to the actual base where the shine through logo will be. I'm gonna wait 10 minutes and then actually splay the white on it later. This is our second coat of pink. So you can go a little bit heavier on this coat. So it's gonna get a little bit more coverage. The pink that I'm using is actually not um, a full coverage color. Some of these Montana can colors have like a small bar, which kind of looks like your reception bar on your cell phone. Um, if it has all the bars, it means that it covers 100%. The ones that don't have all the bars cover a little bit less than that. So you usually have to do a couple more coats to get the color that you want to come out. I'm actually doing the fade now. So I'm applying a little bit of pink on top of the white that we already painted. And then I'm gonna let it dry for a bit. I can already hit the first coat of white on the actual base of the mouse. While that dries, I'm going to go ahead and take out my stencils after the, the mouse has already dried for around an hour or so. So here we peel off Kiloa. You can see it ends up looking very smooth. Now we're going to go ahead and peel off Lowe's name. I apologize for the camera precision here. You don't actually see what I'm doing, but I'm just taking out the stencil, same like I did with the Kiloa. which I also painted by the way. I painted it red. All right, the fans are important. They exhaust all of the fast artist fumes that are in the room. And now we're gonna actually give it clear coat, which this is also 10 minutes apart. If you're gonna be using 2K clear coat like I am here, please make sure you're wearing a mask. This stuff is very bad for you if you smell it. So I'm gonna lightly mist all the pieces with one coat and then I'm gonna wait 10 minutes and do another coat and then 10 minutes after that, do the last coat.
So here guys, we're just removing all the masking around the mouse. The mouse has already been drying for 24 hours, so all the paint should already be pretty dry. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the tape that I put on the back of this piece. This mouse is very easy to put back together as well as take apart. You guys are gonna see shortly. So actually the side buttons kind of click on the sides once you put them in from the inside. It's kind of hard to display, but and they have very small hinges where you just press them towards each other and then you release them on the small holes. I've had a lot of you guys ask me how do you change the scroll wheels on these so practically you just remove it like I did now it's just a plastic ring that goes around the scroll wheel and we're just gonna swap, swap it out for a white one which I think it looks better because the fade of pink is actually at the top these are actually size 9 for a viper ultimate um, and they fit perfectly you just screw everything back in There's an electric screwdriver that I got off of Amazon. It's actually incredibly handy. It's probably one of the best investments that I've made. It was actually given to me by my editor. I also purchased one for myself for the living room because, you know, I'm probably going to need to most of the time. I'm just removing the masking that I put on the back of the mouse. You have to be very careful with the Viper Ultimate and the Viper because these actually have these springs inside, the ones that I'm actually separating right now. And those actually help the click come back up, so you guys want to make sure you keep those. And they go in that very small hole that I put them there. And then the top just snaps back on.
I'm just putting my phone under to make sure that the logo signs perfectly, and it actually does. So just double checking your work. Let's make sure it comes out well. Uh, the battery is literally held by four screws, which is pretty simple to put back together. And then you just have to put those two cables on their corresponding plug. And that's pretty much it. After that, you're done. The top shell just snaps back on, put the front of the mouse in first, and then you snap on the back after. And then you press a little bit on the sides until you hear it snap. Once it's back in place, everything should be working perfectly. And this is our finished product, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy. And here's how it looks with the light on.